Hey guys, it's Dylan. So Tesla loses NHTSA safety recognition after removing radar. If you guys remember yesterday's episode, some of the Tesla safety features will be disabled for a few weeks as Tesla updates the software to work without radar for the Model 3 and Model Y. So apparently yesterday, NHTSA removed certain safety designations for vehicles produced after April 27th. The safety body does not give its check mark for forward collision warning, lane departure warning, crash imminent braking, and dynamic brake support according to Reuters. Nothing to really worry about here as Tesla will get these check marks back once these features are working again with the software update. It might be a few weeks or months and the only thing in the interim would be insurance rates. If you go to apply for insurance for a Tesla, the Model 3 or Model Y, under these situations, then you may have to pay slightly more. Only time will tell, but in the long run, not a big deal. Next up, this is a huge expensive rumor, but the Financial Times reported on Wednesday, citing people working in the semiconductor industry, suppliers, manufacturers, consultants, that Tesla is discussing supply chain proposals with industry operators in Taiwan, South Korea, and the US. Under these conditions, meaning the chip shortages, some chip makers have begun to allow large customers like Tesla to make upfront payments to ensure certain orders are fulfilled at a fixed price. Now, according to rumors, Tesla may turn out to be one of those clients, which in a video I made months ago, we talked about this exact thing. But the big potentially expensive rumor is in addition, sources said Tesla has expressed an interest in buying the chip factory. I'm not sure which one they are referring to with V, but they are talking about buying a foundry, a semiconductor fab. Now, if you're not familiar with the semiconductor space, I have linked some of the videos that I made on this topic doing deep dives a few weeks back. They're still very applicable today. And now arguably I would say even more important than they were back then. But from Zero Hedge, the company Tesla is going to be paying in advance for these semis, the chips it needs, and is also considering buying a plant according to that report by the financial Times. The company, Tesla, is reportedly in talks with semi companies in Taiwan, South Korea, and the US. No, this is not semi-truck, this is the semiconductors. Ambrose Conroy, founder and chief exec of Serif Consulting, told Financial Times they, meaning Tesla, will buy capacity at first, but they are actively considering buying their own foundry. Now, just so you guys know, most foundries cost between 15 and $20 billion. And last time I checked, Tesla has about $20 billion of cash on hand. So they're not gonna clean themselves out. Of course, they wouldn't make a one-time lump sum cash payment and they could probably get really good financing terms at the moment. However, this is one of the most complicated and complex industries on the planet. And with the news that some of these foundries are already allowing Tesla to make upfront payments to avoid some of these shortages, that would kind of discount the news that they are really going to try to buy their own. But this is absolutely something to monitor. Companies like Samsung can change contracting agreements with companies like Tesla who seek specialized chips. Given the current capacity shortage, Samsung may give dedicated capacity to companies like Tesla, which uses chips with a longer life cycle. As you guys know, these chips are updated frequently, whether it's annually or every few years as the technology progresses. But the problem is creating new lines is a very laborious and expensive process. So if Tesla uses a chip that has a longer shelf life, then that is going to be an advantage from a negotiating standpoint. And this situation is not going away. Intel's CEO said a couple weeks ago, we have a couple of years until we catch up to the surging demand across every aspect of the business. So our previous speculation seems to be true that Tesla did indeed have a negotiating advantage with these semiconductor suppliers due to their size and scale. But now it's going even further with potential talks between Tesla and some of these fabs to actually buy a foundry. So we'll see how this progresses in the coming weeks. Next up, a new bill to reform the federal electric car tax incentive in the US has passed the US Senate Finance Committee. The vote was actually 14 to 14, but given how it's set up, it passed. Not like officially passed, but step one, it is moving forward. It includes increasing the electric vehicle tax credit up to $12,500, but it was expertly crafted to give less to Tesla vehicle buyers. So what are they talking about? First up, the main goal has been to lift the cap of 200,000 electric car deliveries per manufacturer manufacturer, which has put Tesla and GM at a disadvantage because they were the first movers in producing EVs. And there is a three year phase out period that is going to start when electric cars reach a 50% market share of new passenger car sales in the US. So basically once 50% of all new passenger car sales are electric, this plan would start to phase out more in a second. With this proposed plan, the $7,500 incentive is still there, 
but it would increase to 10,000 and an extra 2,500 for EVs made in the US and an additional 2,500 to 12,500 total for EVs produced in the US by union workers, AKA not Tesla because they are a non-union company. And it appears to be crafted specifically to block Tesla's access to the full incentive that last $2,500 amount since the California-based automaker is one of the rare automakers whose workforce is not controlled by the UAW. The bill does have a sticker price limit of $80,000, which is a lot higher than similar EV incentives in other countries, like in Canada where it's $55,000. But remember, it's not a done deal yet. But a little more, Ford would lose out because it makes the Mach-E in Mexico, but the F-150 Lightning would get the full $12,500 because it checks every box. And as mentioned, as for Tesla, it would get a partial credit for making the Model 3 and the Model Y in the US, but as I mentioned, its workforce is not unionized. So for Tesla's, it would be that $10,000 figure. And with the Model S priced at $79,990, it would be eligible, but any single upgrade would push it over that $80,000 threshold. And there was nothing that I saw that mentioned any phase out with regard to the $80,000 cap. But the big discussion is whether it's going to be a point of sale rebate or a federal income tax credit, and they are indeed different. Point of sale rebates reduce the purchase price of the EV at the point that the consumer buys the vehicle. Whereas a state income tax credit or a federal income tax credit, they work the same. EV purchasers receive the credit at the end of the financial year in which they purchase the car when taxes are filed, so not as beneficial. But this is interesting because Tesla doesn't have a regular dealership model. The dealership ordinarily when it comes to rebates receives the money for the rebate from the manufacturer and then passes it along to the consumer. So the dealership is not allowed to hold the rebate back or keep any portion of it when it comes to the regular dealership model. So while the rebate does in fact come off the selling price of the vehicle, the dealership is fully reimbursed by the manufacturer for the total amount of the rebate. So the rebate does not involve any kind of financial loss for the dealership. So how this would work for a company like Tesla is TBD, but we can assume if the Cybertruck is 39.9 for the base model and Tesla qualifies for the $10,000 amount and it does turn out to be a rebate, when you go to buy your Cybertruck, it would indeed be $29,000 and Tesla and the government essentially handle that rebate portion. So remember that bill is not a done deal. It still needs to be voted on. Some things and everything really is still subject to change and negotiation, but that is how it stands for now. And speaking of the Cybertruck, Cybertruck, we see a new patent for the Cybertruck tonneau cover that does indeed have solar panels. And the point of the cover in the first place, not only may such aftermarket truck bed covers be hard to install, they may not fit exactly with the specs of the truck beds and the different models. If a bed cover doesn't have an accurate fit, it can leak rain or snow through the gaps between the cover and the walls around the truck, causing cargo to be damaged. So this patent shows how it would be able to recharge the vehicle's battery pack thanks to 110 solar electric cells that are electrically connected to a photovoltaic charging system and battery. When the tonneau cover is deployed to cover the bed and the solar electric cells that make up the slats are facing the sun, the battery within the electric vehicle can be charged by solar electric cells. And remember this tweet from Elon back at the end of November, there will be an option to add solar power that generates 15 miles per day, possibly more. Would love this to be self-powered. Adding fold out solar wings would generate 30 to 40 miles per day. Average miles per day in the US is 30, meaning the average person drives about 30 miles per day. This was in response to a tweet about the solar powered tonneau cover. So I've linked the full patent below if you want to take a look. Personally on this one, I'm kind of struggling to see how these solar panels would all be folded into the truck when the tonneau cover is not deployed. Obviously it seems as though they have a way to do it. It's just how efficient and how useful would this feature be? How much extra would this additional option be when buying a Cybertruck? I don't know, I have a lot of questions. It's a really cool idea and you know, for 30 miles of range per day if you live in a sunny place or 15 given what Elon originally said without the fold out variant. And it's cool, but we'll see how this development progresses and how soon this would actually be a feature on the Cybertruck. And to wrap up today, I'll leave you with a few pictures of the Ford F-150 Lightning scene in the wild. Thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you did and a major thank you to everybody at the end of the video. I hope you have a great day.